Zabbix API. I will show you some examples in the Python and also simply from the command line. Uh, potentially we will talk about what kind of integrations or the same optimization you could make and to get to get some some benefit outside of the Zabbix API and, and the Zabbix itself. What do I have here for today is, uh, as usually, the zabbix.org page. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff about, about API, including the API libraries, which will be needed for the Python API. Then I have a bunch of GitHub pages with, uh, with the cool things I will show you and tell you about. The first one is just the library for the Python uh, and the Zabbix API. We will need it for this little thing. And this little thing, the Zabbix Gnomes is, well, again, a community-made solution that basically is, all of these, each of these is a script to do something with a Zabbix API. As example, let's take this one, this one, add and remove the host groups or host finder. So to find information about host. This could potentially, was, and uh, it will, save your time because those are the simplest and most common things that you might be doing with a Zabbix API. And because of this, you won't have to spend your time to write the same calls in the Python that thousands, millions of people are, are already using. So all you'll have to do is just grab these scripts and uh, pass the parameters required. You will see, we'll talk about it, and uh, yeah, you will get the result. You will also see how it looks like. Uh, another one, the documentation, of course. What would be the Zabbix tutorial video without a Zabbix documentation, right? So in, in the Zabbix documentation, there is an API bullet with the method references that has information about absolutely all the possible API calls inside a Zabbix and also with examples, how it should look like to, let's say, create a host called Linux server with an IP interface and blah, 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 and the response that the host actually is created. Uh, what else? I have my Zabbix frontend. We won't be using it uh, a lot today. Uh, 4.0, as usual, uh, CLI on my virtual machine, which is CentOS 7. Uh, clean installation with SI Linux disabled. Let me clean the screen, we won't use this. Uh, yeah, I have a cup of tea, uh, notepad with some examples I already made to show you. And uh, paint, the most powerful tool for for all the video making and, and tutorial making about is Abex. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So, uh, long story short, what is API, the application programming language? This is just another way how you can interference with a Zabbix. With a Zabbix in terms of configuration. So we know that, let's get inside a paint, we have a Zabbix server, then we have a DB, which is a database, and we have a frontend. Zabbix server is connected to the database and frontend also is connected to the database. There is a small communication between the frontend and the server, but it's not important at this point. So each time the Zabbix server collects something from your, I don't know, PC or something, that data is processed by the Zabbix server binary process and written inside the database. Each time you open the frontend, this one, this one, and let's say, Create a new host. I don't know, host name, something, click save, click uh, add. What happens? That information about that host is written to the database, right? Uh, then, all of this is absolutely cool. You can edit any configuration uh, in terms of the Zabbix from the front end, but uh, the bad thing is that all of that is happening manually. You need to manually click configuration host, create a host, fill in all the required uh, 
all the required fields, click add button, or if you need to change something from your existing configuration, let's say in some of the hosts, you need to click configuration hosts, search for the one, the one host and, and make those changes. It takes a lot of time, it takes, uh, well, simply human resources, and that's definitely not the optimization of the task. What's the another way? Uh, we also talked about, the previous video was about inventory collection and uh, I mentioned it, let's say, if you want to update all the existing hosts from your Zabbix to change the inventory mode. I told you that there are basically two ways uh, normally how you could do that. Uh, first of all, execute a database query and the second hand you could uh, use a Zabbix API to do that. So, in our beautiful picture, a database query would mean that we execute direct query to the database to update some tables uh, of the host based on some conditions and change the default inventory mode on the host. This works fine, but again, the database is pretty complicated thing. Not all of us are able to write, uh, let's say, something more complicated than just to select everything from table one. Uh, and it's pretty easy to break some stuff inside a Zabbix to corrupt your database if you have, uh, let's say, a full permissions on it and you don't have a good understanding what you are doing. So you're just experimenting and that can get some trouble to you. And the last way how to do that is a Zabbix API. So let's 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 delete this one. Let's delete this one. So we have our front end. No worse brush. The front end. An API engine is based exactly on uh, on the Zabbix front end. Each time you will be using API, you will be connecting to Let's make this smaller, uh, let's make it HTTP, some IP, let's move it here, then it could be Zabbix, and the most important part, it always will be API underscore JSON RPC dot PHP. This is the PHP page to which you will be always connecting and executing your API calls. This page and, and all the front end itself with all the PHP files already knows what does API call as example host create means. It means that you are trying to create a new host inside the database, but not with the direct queries, but through the front end. So we still have a DB here and front end and, and 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 let's say that will be you you are using api do the json rpc to create a host and the front end knows if you are using api with a method host create there will be mandatory fields that are required for you to specify and this is the example so i am using host.create and I am specifying the interfaces and uh, we can take a look here interfaces are required the groups are required and uh, where can we get information about the interfaces host object interfaces not here mm. Host create. So I guess it will be under the interface. Host interface under this one. Yes, you see, there are four types of the host interfaces. Same as we have in our Zabbix front end. One, two, three, four. But in the API, normally you won't be able to use like the strings, the A genus and the PI, PMI or JMX, those will be just a numeric data, one, two, three, dot, four. And what do we have in our example? We are using type one, which means that we will be using 
Zabbix agent interface. This one. Uh, then another one. What else do we have? Main one. Uh, and that means it is also required that it will be uh, whether the interface is used as default on the host. So that will be a default interface. One, yes, it will be default interface. Use IP. Use IP. Whether the connection should be made via IP. Zero, connect via DNS. One, connect via IP address. In the front end, it looks like connect via IP address or DNS. IP or DNS. And when you are pa passing this information, like use IP one or zero, Zabbix understands which you want to use. And you don't have to manually click this button in the front end. All of that is happening automatically. Uh, what else? Then you are actually specifying IP address, the DNS if you would like to use it, a port, then a groups. What is a groups? Uh, this probably will be here in the host object. Host object. Not host groups. This will be this one. The group ID. So, the groups and the group ID 50. We are talking about host groups. Because the host group is a mandatory thing for any host that you could have inside a frontend. You are not able to create a host without a host group. And you have two options. You can create a new one or just specify the group ID of the existing host group. Next, the templates. Template ID. Again, not the name of the template. You are not able to specify that, yeah, okay, I want to use... Oh, let me this yeah um, that I want to use template operating system Windows but you can specify that you want to use a template ID 10081 and that will be the template operating system Windows there we go template ID the macrosses and uh, remember we also had a video about the user macrosses so you can specify that on this newly created host there will be a user macro called user ID with a value 123321 whatever inventory mode inventory mode of this host and also you can specify already when you are creating a host some inventory fields this sounds cool so you execute this and you get a new host created in the front end but What's the benefit? Uh, I guess it would be faster to do it from the front end. Yes, exactly, but this is normally not used to create one single host. We're talking about the programming language, the Python, the Bash, or, or whatever else, which means that you can run different functions, uh, different operations and calculations before executing this call. Let's say you might get uh, information from some your internal CSV document which will have inventory about computers in your office in your environment which will also contain the information like what's the host name of that machine what's the IP address and also I don't know the designation is it a Linux is it a Windows operating system and you can use that information from your CSV file and use those values as variables for the required fields as a host name, as IP address, and then just in a loop create hundreds or even thousands or hundreds of thousands hosts automatically with the unique values and you won't have to do that manually in front end or through the database but that will require some knowledge and uh, well in the python in this case next let's try to dig 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 deeper uh you asked about a python i said okay let's talk about a python so in the zabbix.org by the way i if i will not forget i will post all of these uh, urls that we're talking about except all of the all of the pages from the documentation uh, in the description of the video so in the zabbix.org there is a thing called zabbix api libraries and you see there's quite a lot of them 
for the Zabbix API and a Python. Then there is also for the Ruby, the Crystal, Java, PHP, PowerShell, JavaScript, C Sharp, Go, Rust, our online web. So what I'm trying to say, is there's quite a lot of them. And we will, we will be talking about this, why Zabbix. And I have also uh, the GitHub page of this library open it. So PyZabbix is a Python mo module for working with a Zabbix API. And there is information how you can install the PyZabbix. Because by default, it's not available on your, on your server, on your computer. Uh, pip install PyZabbix, cool. But uh, on the fresh installation, there is no pip on your machine as well. So first of all, you need to install the pip. I already did that on uh, my virtual machine, but I've saved uh, the commands for you. Basically, there are two options. First, Apple repo, and then you will be able to yum install uh, Python pip, I think, just search. Or the other one, if you don't have an Apple repo and you don't want to add it for some reasons, just like I did, you can just use the curl, uh, copy paste this line. Won't be easy, I guess, to copy paste from a YouTube video, but uh, oh well, there's not a lot to write. Uh, minus so get dash pip dot Python, and you will ins you will get this Python script. Then just execute it, python get pip dot pi, and uh, since this command you will have a pip available on your virtual machine, just like I do, see there is a pip for various versions, then just pip install pyzabbix, and this command will install a python module uh, for the Zabbix API. And since then you will be able to use it in your Python scripts and uh, the Zabbix gnomes that we will be talking about next, these guys are exactly using the, how is it called? PyZabbix, PyZabbix model. So you won't be able to use this solution if you don't install it. I've already did this, so it's not it's not required for me. Let's check what do I have else. Uh, a few examples. I've opened this GitHub page, the Zabbix Gnomes. Uh, I've cloned it to my virtual machine. So this, using the git. And uh, yeah, you see I have the Zabbix Gnomes. Zabbix Gnomes, and what do we have here? We have a bunch of, <coughs> let's say, most common Python scripts that that are basically used uh, inside of the Zabbix. And uh, how can we use them? Why this is easier for the beginners and, and, and for somebody that are just starting with a Zabbix API and they're not sure what, what could be the required parameters or, or how to specify them, how to pass them. Uh, I have this uh, in my notepad, so the examples, but whatever, let's let's just, I have a script, I don't know how to use them, um, let's run zhostfinder.python, without any arguments, without anything, just, yeah, there's a script, let's run it, and it fails, uh, it fails, obviously, because I didn't specify any information, but what do we see, the usage, minus h for help, cool, and there are two options, search and A, which, I don't know, uh, for me it was kind of obvious that it means all. So there are two options, search or just uh, get all. Then minus U username minus P password, which also is very important. We didn't touch this in my beautiful drawing. So there is an API with us, API underscore JSON dot RPC uh, dot PHP. And of course, absolutely 100%, you need to authenticate uh, with your credentials to execute something through the API, to change the configuration or, or, or to make something different. Uh, that's, that the authentication happens with the same credentials that you have in the Zabbix frontend, the admin, the guest, or normally you would create a separate user simply for the Zabbix API. 
and remember that API respects the permissions of the user. So if you create a new user for your API scripts that don't have permissions to any host groups, then don't be surprised that you won't be uh, able to get any information uh, from those host groups because that user simply doesn't have permissions. Good. So, uh, yeah, let's try to, to do it. I'll do minus A minus U username. The default one admin P password Zabex. Uh, let's click enter. Command not found. Yeah, obviously. Uh, Z host finder dot P. API URL is not set. And this is this part. You will always have to point your API calls to your API underscore jsonrpc.php. So in my case, it will be, what do we have here? Uh, minus underscore um, lowercase a and the URL. It is HTTP uh, localhost sabex API JSON rpc.php. There we go you get an output of all of your servers inside Zabbix. And by the way, there's also the explanation, uh, capital S is search and capital A is all, all, yeah. Uh, two servers, Zabbix server, MySQL monitoring. Let's go back to the front end. What do I have here? I have MySQL monitoring, Zabbix server. Let's create a new one, new server and add it to the host group, I don't know, Linux servers. Add, I have three hosts, execute the Z host finder Python from the Zabbix Gnomes, and I have three hosts. What else, what else do we have here? Uh, Z host finder, uh, let's try the search output. Uh, let's say if you have thousands of the hosts and you need to find something that has MySQL, then just capital S MySQL so we are searching and you are getting just a MySQL monitoring because it matches your uh, pattern that you are looking for and uh, this one as example so the one I showed you now that was to get output outside of the Zabbix but it is also possible to create something let's make it like this and for this task, I am using another Python script, which is also here somewhere, this one. Z group create Python. I am specifying the credentials, admin, Zabbix, a URL, uh, and a host group that I want to create. I think I already have them, so let me delete them. No, I don't have them, cool. Uh, so I want to create a testing host group. Logging in with a username admin. Let's go to the front end. And what do I have here? I have a new host group testing. I can create testing, testing one, testing two. Too many. Sorry. No. Uh, what's the problem? Host group testing already exists. That's the problem. Yeah, I could create it. So make it like this. Create it. Refresh and I have a lot of testing host groups again I am doing that manually from the CLI But think that you can run this in your script and use some some variables that are gathered by some other methods some other operations and you could dynamically create a new host groups and Then we talked previously about a host create so you can create a new host and uh, add them to these newly created host groups and link some templates and all of that through the uh, Python in this case. Okay, uh, let's continue to do the next part. Uh, the next part is how you can simply test uh, API methods without using a Python, without using a bash or, or, or any, I don't know, C sharp, C++, whatever else. Just use the curl because that basically is uh, HTTP or HTTPS request to your front end, which is uh, posting the information and, and, and 
specifying that you are executing a API call. What, where did I get this from? I, I didn't write it from my own. All of this comes from the documentation. Uh, API, then we need user and user login. See, this part is copy pasted in my, t in my notepad. What changed here? This line. You will have to add this and what do we have here? The curl with a, hand, with a header that it will be application JSON RPC. Then we're posting URL of your Zabbix frontend pointed to API underscore JSON RPC dot PHP. And then the data, the stuff I copy pasted from the documentation. User login method and I am passing a parameters and there, there are two parameters, the username, admin, and a password, Zabbix. Always, uh, let me just show you. If you will do it like this, copy, paste, CLI, copy, paste, okay. Doesn't work, cool, uh, because of the new lines. So add a text after the brackets and before the brackets, like this. Then you can copy paste and run them. You see there's the result. JSONRPC 2.0 result is some kind of uh, token. And, and this token actually is a session ID of the user with which we just authenticated. And we will use this session ID in our next calls. So let's take a next one. This one is using host get. So again, let me just copy paste all of this. Let me make this wrong. Copy paste, enter. So I am using a host get method, which will retrieve information about a host. I am using filtering based on the host name. And I am looking for the host with a host name called Zabbix server. Uh, and the Linux server, I think, yeah. And uh, authentication with a session ID, and I added ASD in the, in the end of the session ID, and I get an error because invalid parameter, session ID value is too long, so it will not work. And if I will fix it, so let's say I've copy-pasted the session ID that we got in here, I'll take copy paste of this, add it here, delete unneeded quotes, copy paste. There we go. I get information about my Zabbix server host. And there's no MySQL host, uh, there's no host called Linux server. That's why there's just a Zabbix server. Let's open the front end and. Uh, I don't know, use some other one. Uh, my SQL monitoring. I am adding a new parameter, so I need to add a comma, quotes, host name, and no quotes, uh, no comma since it is a last one. Just copy paste this one again. And I get a lot more information because I found a host MySQL monitoring and a host the Zabbix server. You see that the information is a lot and it's not really readable from the CLI, but actually it's pretty simple. Disabled until zero, it's not disabled. Error message, there's no error message because, well, there's none. The host is green, it is monitored, everything is successfully available. One. Everything is okay, no errors, the last access, maintenance ID, zero, the host is not inside the maintenance. Uh, what else? JMX available, uh, there should be SNMP available, somewhere here, SNMP error. All of that comes with information from your host and we are not using any filtering here on some specific fields like a host ID or, or the proxy host ID to get a smaller output, like we could be doing here. No. Yeah, okay, whatever. So you could pick some example 
another example from the documentation like host get get the example this one no this one let's use this Add the tick. So we are using again a host get, but in the output we want to see the host ID and the host groups, right? The host ID and the groups to which this host is attached. And I want to filter my request only on the host Cybex server and do the authentication. Uh, I will have to use this. This will not work. Let me take it from. So let me replace the session ID. Session ID, copy, paste, click, and there we go. I get information about a host ID, host get, uh, which is a Zabbix server host. And if you will go to the front end, you can actually see that uh, click on the Zabbix server in the URL, there is a host ID 10084. Uh, here, 10084. So it is a Zabbix server host with a group ID 4, and the name of that host group is Zabbix servers, and some also additional information. Again, you can use it deeper in, 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 in your scripts to achieve some results. And uh, the last part, I have no idea for how long we're talking, I feel like a lot, but, but the last one is how to create a host. This will be a little bit, a little bit interesting. And again, the example is from the documentation. I am using a host.create this example, but yeah, let's take this one without any changes absolutely as it is and it won't be working let's let's fix it i'll zoom out uh, just to fill this in in one screen something uh, sorry there i go so just copy paste from here and uh, we are missing the curl line this one it of course remains as just as it was before there is just a header with application json rpc then we're posting and the url to api underscore json rpc dot php file with the data and uh, the first tick and the second tick in the end. So let's just copy paste it uh, from the documentation and let's try to execute it on the CLI and it fails first of all because the session is terminated. So again we're talking about the session ID, the authentication part. So let's grab it. No, no. Let me tick back. Let's grab the session ID from our previous examples and copy paste it here. Will this be enough? So clear, paste, enter, problem. No permission to referred object or it does not exist. What? We don't know. So let's look on our request. What are we actually doing? Host create. We are adding, uh, specifying the parameters. We want to create a host. Let's say YouTube tutorial with an interfaces type 1 remember it was a Zabbix agent then some IP not without DNS the port and we want to add it to the host group <coughs> with a group ID 50 and I have a feeling that we simply don't have a host group with a group ID 50 so let's go to the configuration host groups and let's say I want to add it to the Linux servers Open the Linux server's host group and look on the URL. What do we have? Group ID. Group ID 2. Uh, if you would automating that completely, of course you won't have to open the, open the front end and, uh, and, and check the URL. You would run uh, host group get method API call 
to specify the name of the host group and retrieve a host group ID, the group ID, and then use that retrieve group ID in this call. What do we have else? The templates, template ID. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe we don't have the template ID 245. So let's just open template operating system windows. And again, in the URL, there is a template ID. This one, copy paste it. What else? Macro user ID value. Yeah, everything from this can stay as it is. And now let's just copy paste the line paste it here, enter, result, we have a new host with a host ID 10267. Let's open the front end, configuration hosts, and indeed we have a new YouTube tutorial host with a template linked as operating system windows because I've specified the template ID. Uh, I also have agent interface with a specified IP that I have here in my call, the port IP. I have a macro, user ID 123321, this part. And I should also have a couple, two inventory fields. There we go, the MAC address. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's about it that I would want to tell in... Uh, I don't know, first we're, 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 we're the only video about a Zabbix API. Um, so we talked about how you can get information, we created a new host, but you're not limited to that. You can change existing configuration. It is possible to host.update, figure out the examples, what parameters do you need to specify the host ID, what you are changing and let's say you could change uh, the interface from the agent to a SNMP or some of the values of the inventories. Uh, you can delete some configuration. You can get the history outside of the Zabbix through the API. Uh, once again, why in some cases this is better than direct queries if you don't know, if you're not an expert of the databases. The front-end, the Zabbix front-end, already knows everything about all of the supported API methods. And, uh, well, basically the front-end is connecting to the database to get the information you are looking for when you are running an API call. And the front-end has already defined queries in the code written by the Zabbix developers, optimized for proper performance and blah, blah, blah. So you don't need to worry about that you'll break something, that you'll log the database with some uh, bad queries, so everything will be fine. You just need to run API query and that's it. Uh, what else? Let's, let's make a new one. The ways how you can use this, how you can use the Zabbix API uh, for automation, for integration. From my experience, let's take an example. You have a super large company uh, with a Zabbix installed, a lot of front-end users, a lot of front-end admins, and, and hundreds, thousands of the hosts, items, triggers, and you simply cannot control all your employees. And you're afraid that some of them one day could go to, let's say, configuration templates, Windows, Discovery, Windows Service Discovery and change 30 days to 30 seconds. One change, one letter, D to S, and next day you go to work and you see that the performance of your Zabbix is just so bad that your monitoring is uh, is blocked. You are not able to monitor anything, you are not able to get data, everything is bad, uh, process busy graphs are close to 100, a lot of false positives, a lot of the ba bad things, and then you notice, yeah, you found out that it happened because of this mistake and you fix it, so how can you be sure that it won't happen again? As example, you could change your policy of the company that all of the changes in in in, in the 
in the templates in the items trigger thresholds are happening only through some one uh, centralized template storage as example where, where item or trigger storage and uh, it doesn't matter if somebody will <clears throat> make some changes here in the front end let's say two times a day there will be a global script uh, with an API with a configuration import where, where, where template import running to override all of the things happening today here in the front end with the values, with the parameters that you have in your centralized storage of the table of the templates. Another thing is uh, a pretty often thing. We have a Zabbix, we have a Z, then we have an Actions, and we have a ticketing system. Let's say service now. And uh, you have a triggers when something happens. You just send an alert to the service now. Uh, might be within just an email. It might be some custom alert script that is creating a service now ticket. And that ticket normally is uh, ticket one two three four five. Well, it has some ID, but that's it. You sent it. You can see in the front end that action, the script executed successfully, email sent successfully. That's all you know outside of the Zabbix. Let's say in the front, in the Friday, you leave the, the work and come back in the Monday and see that there is a disaster incident in your environment happened uh, Friday, 20 minutes after you left, and, and it's still in the problem state. The trigger is still in the problem. Uh, you know the ticket is created, but you don't know is something actually happening to fix it. You don't know what's the ticket ID. You lost it since you sent an email. Because it is a one-way integration uh, Zabbix with a ticketing system. You just parse the information from the Zabbix to the ticketing system and then you lose information. But you could use a Zabbix API to establish a two-way integration. Let's say your ServiceNow creates a ticket and at the same time it performs an API call using this ticket ID as a variable and it runs problem.acknowledge API method and it is Oh, where it will be, let me try to find it, where was it, trigger.acknowledge, nope, problem, nope, uh, event, yes, event.acknowledge, event.acknowledge, and the request looks like I need to specify the parameters, the event ID, and this event ID will be also uh, passed as information about the trigger from your Zabbix. So we will also use event ID uh, right back here to the event.acknowledge. And the message, let's use the ticket number created here as a message for the acknowledgement. Authentication with a session ID and through the API back to the Zabbix. And what will happen? Let's say I have a problem. Let's say this problem created a new ticket in the service now here. Then the service now performed an API call with an information as event ID of this problem event and the ticket number, which is visible for the service now. Perform problem acknowledgement, this. And basically left a message, ticket one two three four five. Simple thing, one acknowledgement. But this case, in this case, you will come at the work in a Monday. You will see that there is a disaster incident in your company, and you will see acknowledged with the ticket ID. Open the service now. Open your ticketing system. Copy paste this ticket ID. Open the ticket and see the progress see did somebody already reacted on this or or what's the problem what are the steps to fix it
that's enough for today. Uh, I don't know. I think we're talking for like 40 minutes. Uh, thank you for your attention. I really appreciate if you have it till the end of this video because I really think that this will be the longest video in, in all the channel. As mentioned in the beginning, this is a super deep and super complicated topic with a lot, a lot of functionality and... Uh, 90% of success will be based on your skill, how you can write a script, uh, how you can write the scripts and then just utilize the documentation of the Zabbix, uh, check all the supported API methods, there are more than 230 of them and basically you can do 99% of all the things you could do in the front end or in the database, you can do that also with an API. So stay tuned. Click the subscribe button, click the like button. I really appreciate all the support and see you in the next videos a bit later. Thank you and goodbye.